Well, thank you so much for staying with us, and that's what we're talking about next. Uh, May 2023, that's May this year, 26th day especially, former President uh, Muhammad Buhari uh, signed the Arbitration and Mediation Bill, marking what experts say is the end of legislative process and the beginning of a new arbitration regime in Nigeria. Now, that act, the, the 2023 Arbitration and Mediation Act, offers a revamped and modern legal framework to an entities seeking to arbitrate their commercial disputes in Nigeria. The act uh, introduces several provisions that will be of interest to arbitration users in the country. Well, if you're wondering what this is all about, I'm just a journalist and a presenter. We have two guests here with us, both from the Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. Shala Oshodi John is the registrar. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you, sir. As well as Francis Ulege, who is a faculty member, Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having us. So let me ask, let me begin with you. Ladies first, no offense. Nice uh, <laughs> uh, just to be clear, for those who are hearing about this, perhaps for the first time. What is this new um, Arbitration and Mediation Act? Um, how is it different from the old? Thank you very much uh, for inviting us. The new act, the Arbitration and Mediation Act, that was uh, acceded to by the president, former president, Mohamed Bouhari, in May this year, is a game changer for us in arbitration. Um, the new act is extensively, it's been extensively reviewed and it has now been brought in conformity with the UNCITRA model on international law. And so uh, we are very excited about it. There are a lot of new provisions that will make arbitration more user-friendly and will also assist us as arbitral institutions to do our work effectively. Hmm. So one of the new provisions that I think is a game changer is the fact that now the default arbitrator is one sole arbitrator. In the past, it used to be three. Mm. Whether it is 5,000 naira or 5 million naira or uh, 5 billion. Once the parties do not say who the number of arbitrators they want and they end up in court, the courts will appoint three. So now the default position is one which is in line with global practice. So if the parties have an invalid arbitration clause or they fail to talk about it, the arbitration institute will appoint an arbitrator for them and mm. one. And so, like I said, the powers of the arbitral institute is very extensive. Now, we can appoint. It doesn't matter whether I, we are mentioned as the uh, appointed institution, authority or not. Once the parties come to us, the law, uh, the new act gives us the power to appoint arbitrators on behalf of the parties. Hmm. Well, Mr. Olege, uh, what changes are we to expect uh, in the practice of arbitration and mediation? I mean, she's probably just mentioned one, you know, but the question a number of people will ask, for instance, let me even, you know, ask you this. There are those who would wonder what arbitration and mediation even means in the first place. You know, some are hearing all of these for the first time, and she's talking about one being appointed, three being appointed. Some are hearing this for the first time. What, what, what does it mean? Yeah, um, arbitration is a process whereby parties appoint uh, a third party neutral to give a final decision on the issues they present before him. So it's like um, he's doing what, uh, what a judge would do. In the case of a judge, you call that a judgment. But in the case of an arbitrator, you call that an award. So the parties appoint the arbitrator or arbitrators, as the case may be, to evaluate their evidence, look at their documents, you know, listen to parties, and then give a final decision that will be binding on the parties. But, uh, but, but, but that means so circumventing the, the courts, because of course we all know that uh, going to courts in Nigeria, for instance, could take a very long time before the matter comes to a finality. Mm. You know, and businessmen, commercial men, they don't have that time to waste, really. You know, so because of that, they they prefer, you know, to uh, refer their matters to a third party neutral who could give a final decision. On the other hand, mediation is uh, different 
in mediation, uh, parties want to negotiate. They do not want a binding decision. They want to resolve their issues by themselves. But for some reasons, they can't do that themselves, so they, they want to involve a third party neutral who facilitates the negotiation. It doesn't decide for them. All the mediator does is to facilitate the negotiation between the parties. The negotiation belongs to the parties. The outcome eventually is the parties. In order to determine amicable. it's an amicable settlement okay. between the parties. Okay. That's the difference between mediation and arbitration. Is that within business or inter, in, uh, between businesses? It can be anything. Mediation, we can mediate any case that is not uh, criminal. Uh, there's no criminal matter, there's no divorce, there's no, there's no relation to, to dissolve, uh, dissol dissolution of marriage. You can, you can mediate virtually anything in Nigeria now. I was going to say, do you also mediate marriage? No, you cannot <laughs> mediate. You can mediate a lot yeah, of things about mediate, marriage, yeah. but you cannot mediate Divorce. dissolution, oh, dissolution marriage, yes. of oh, wow. marriage. Yeah. Interesting. So there's this vexed issue of making Nigeria attractive as uh, a seat of arbitration. Um, Mrs. Oshodi John, to what extent will this new help, new act, uh, the new law help in this regard? Um, what else do you think can be, can be done to achieve that? Well, I believe that the new law will help. Uh, it will go a long way to make Nigeria a friendly um, country towards arbitration and that more people would like to, you know, come to Nigeria to resolve that dispute because, like I said earlier, the act now is not full in conformity with the Uncitra Muda law, as well as uh, the New York Convention of 1958 that has to do with um, recognition and enforcement of awards. Uh, and then there are new provisions in the act as well that I believe will also help. We'll talk about uh, emergency arbitrator if there are situations where there may be perishable goods involved and you need to take a decision immediately. The new act provides for that. So you can appoint an arbitrator to ensure that the rex is preserved within three days. Yeah. But having said that, the act itself will not do it. It definitely means that we, the practitioners, must do more, starting with the legal profession. We must embrace alternative dispute resolution and ensure that it works in the country. Uh, moving on, the judiciary as well has a role to play. Because one of the major challenges we've had in the past is the fact that um, awards have been set aside by judges, you know, because they have their own way of looking at it. Some people say it's an interference, and some of us will say it's an intervention. But we think that there must be a structure put in place where, where there's an award and there is a, a challenge to the award, it should be done between a certain number of time, a certain number of months or year. Uh, there must be provision. It should end the old, met, the old style of taking arbitration from the first court, from the court of first instance to the Supreme Court. It's, not, it's a no-no. Because at the end of the arbitration, it goes through the same process that litigation goes through, which is not meant to be. Arbitration is meant to be a finality that after there's an award, that is the end of the matter. And so where parties challenge it, we should come, with, come up with a, with a provision or come up with a mechanism where after the court of appeal, the matter should come to an end. I know that the new ad talks about the review panel. You know, there's now a panel and uh, that, award review the decision. that can review a decision. But then the parties have to agree to go to the, um, review, um, the review panel to review their decision. If there's no agreement, and that's it, they can't go to the review panel. It's a good one, but we don't know how. We have to test the waters and see how it's going to work and how things are going to play out. And these are part of the things we're going to be talking about in our forthcoming annual conference, where we actually have a section targeted to um, the new Arbitration and Mediation Act. We want to see how do we leverage it? How do we ensure that we can actually bring in technology? Because the whole world is talking about technology now. We're going to be reviewing at our conference coming up in Abuja from the 16th to the 17th of November. And we hope that we will be able to do justice, not just to um, the Arbitration and Mediation Act that has been passed, but other issues that are pertinent to the development of arbitration in Nigeria, and not just only Nigeria, but Africa. Like we all know, that Nigeria is the center of Africa. And so if it works for us, it works for every other person. So the seat one will come. 
with the new act, we will see more people coming to Nigeria. But we in Nigeria have to be ready. We have to be prepared. Our courts needs to be ready to make sure that, you know, arbitration is seen to do what it ought to do. That is speedy resolution of disputes among okay. parties. Okay. Uh, Mr. Olegi, there, well, she's talked about one of the highlights of this new act, which is the award review tribunal. There are those who also would uh, point to some other provisions, like the emergency arbitrator procedure, uh, third party funding, interim measures, and their enforcement, and all of that. What do these mean, and what are the implications for your industry? Yeah, for third party funding, it's uh, quite an interesting development that we have now. It means that um, a party who has a, very, who has a good case but doesn't have the money with which to prosecute the matter, could um, get funding from a third party, you know, uh, of course for a fee. You know, the third party will definitely collect a fee at the end of the day if uh, the claimant is successful. So that will actually help, you know. So uh, a claimant who has a good case and uh, does not have money to prosecute it could have funding, prosecute his case, and then if eventually he wins, you know, uh, the funder you know, takes part of uh, the proceeds. However, uh, we, we must look at that very closely because um, we, we've seen all over the world that third party funding became uh, a means of um, uh, business for speculators, you know, who just speculate on cases, fund the cases, and then um, make a lot of money out of it because at times, you know, uh, some of these awards could be very huge. You know, like the PNID case where, you know, an award of 6.6 .6 billion US dollars was awarded against Nigeria. You know, if that would interest, that award now is over 11 billion. So because of that, third party funders are always very willing to fund arbitration matters. You know, so we have to look at that. So the law has to regulate that very well to ensure that uh, third party funding, which is good in itself, is not abused. Talking about emergency arbitration, uh, arbitrators, what that has actually done is to uh, reduce the intervention of courts. You know, the courts intervene and uh, they do very, very well, you know, in, in the interventions because it's necessary most times, you know. But we thought with uh, emergency arbit arbitrator, what you now have is that instead of a party rushing to court, the party can ask the court or an arbitration institution like ours to appoint an emergency arbitrator. And that is done within three days, once the court or the, uh, the arbitration uh, institution receives that request. In three days, he appoints an um, emergency arbitrator. And the purpose for that is, uh, at times, the, the, um, the issue at stake could be perishable items. You know, uh, somebody is claiming for uh, money, and then the money is in um, the other party's uh, uh, account. You know, you know, money can be transferred away out of the account. So you, you just want a situation where that money is preserved. So an emergency arbitrator comes in to give an order preserving the rest. We call that the rest. You know, preserving the subject matter. You know, or the item could be perishable, like tomatoes, for instance. You know, running to several millions of naira or dollars. You know, so the emergency arbitrator come, comes in to um, give an, uh, an an order to make an order to preserve maybe sell off the perishable goods and then keep the money in a dedicated account, mm. you know, pending the outcome of the uh, arbitration. Mm. So it's a good development. Mm. And uh, that will also, like I said, reduce the intervention of the courts and also free the courts of uh, a, a few more cases. How about the issue she mentioned of the courts uh, when, uh, when some people are not satisfied with the decision of the of the intervention of the arbitration to go to the same courts. Yes, that is, that, that is uh, that, like I said, uh, you, you really cannot rule out entirely yeah. intervention of, of the courts because there are areas where you need them. You know, so if, for instance, uh, an, award, uh, an award is final, is binding on the parties, is final, but you see there are instances, few instances, where the law allows a party who is dissatisfied to approach the court to set aside the award. I think that is fine. Okay. Uh, the point Mrs. Osho de John mentioned is uh, when a matter now goes to court, what the new act has tried to do now is when courts intervene, it, the, the new act gives them timelines, unlike before, where the matter can be in court, 
it takes the normal route, you know, uh, it could run into months, years, but now there are timelines. Okay, all right. Well, Mr. Shodijon, you, you've talked about the UNCITRAL a few times. Um, that's the U United Nations Commission on International Trade Law. Uh, tell us about that um, a, a little more exp um, explanation on that and how that how this new law uh, sinks how much more because you've talked about it, you referenced it like once or yeah. twice talk, talk, talk to us about that uh, Citral, uh, the model and how this new law in Nigeria sinks with it. Before I, I talk about UNCITRA, I just, I just remember that it was something that was very crucial that we needed to talk about, and it has to do with misconduct. A lot of the awards that are set aside are set aside on the basis of misconduct, either that the arbitrator misconducted themselves or things happen that is regarded as a misconduct under flimsy excuses and awards are set aside. But with the new law now, we, that's one of the reasons also why a lot of the uh, state parties didn't like Nigeria to be a seat. They didn't want to do the matters in Nigeria because they felt that the awards can be set aside for spurious reasons. Mm -hmm. So with the new law, with the new act now, there's nothing like misconduct. It has been scrapped. So it's a, for me, it's a big one for us, a game changer for Nigeria. So when an award is rendered against a party, you can't run to the courts anymore to say, oh, they have trying to misconduct themselves. So, I want to challenge your award, I want to set it aside. The only grounds in which you can set aside award now is probably on grounds of public policy, uh, grounds of fill and disclosure issues. Maybe the reporter did not disclose, you know, conflict of interest and things like that. So when we come to the issue of UNCITRA, UNCITRA basically is a body of the United Nations that has been set up to make uh, policies and laws for state parties to enable uh, international trade, free flow of trade in goods and services. And UNCITRA has been doing this for so many years. And um, just recently, I and Mr. Olege were in Vienna, Vienna, uh, Vienna, Austria, Austria, representing the Nigerian Institute, our institute at UNCITRA because we have an observer status at UNCITRA. So we're there and we saw that a lot is happening at the international scene and that we needed to be a part of it. And um, you know, it's, it's something that I, I want to appeal to the government of Nigeria to please do more. Because we have a lot of small nations fully represented on Citra. And uh, Nigeria comes in, but they don't have the full representation for the period we were there. The Citra has this commission once a year for about three weeks where they review different laws, starting from laws that has to do with commercial transactions to uh, warehousing to microcredit uh, MSCs to you know um, shipping and maritime so many issues electronics you know now today we're talking about how do we use electronics to capture data to do business transactions and so on and so forth all of these are being looked into by on Citra where they bring in experts from different countries representing their countries as delegates to speak on behalf of their countries, mm. to push their, the interest of their countries. Of course, you know, a lot of time you will not get what you want. So there's always, there's a room for negotiation. There's a lot of negotiation, a lot of... A lot of mediation. Me, me, <laughs> mediation, a lot of, I won't say mediation, there's a lot of uh, uh, interest. Everybody is oh, negotiation trying to Well, I use that. that I, I deliberately and... call it mediation because <laughs> after all, that's what you do. Yeah. You know, but I, there, I'm asking whether or not the, the, this new law yes. helps to address some of the issues. Some in, of the, in the new law helps to address some of the issues, not okay. all of the issues, okay. because Oncitra is a current um, structure of the UN where they look at new developments internationally and they begin to think about policies to make it more convenient for state parties okay. to continue to do their transactions okay. uh, peacefully across state borders. So how, how, how much, uh, Mr. Olege, do you think this new law will encourage foreign investment? I know you referenced the PNIB uh, yeah, case the other time, a PNID case the other time, uh, but does this law help in any way to encourage uh, foreign investment inflows into the country? Yes, I, I think so. I think so. The, the law is very contemporary now. Uh, the law is up to date. Uh, the law uh, is, um, is, uh, mir mirrors the current 
UNCITRA modern law on arbitration, and of course, UNCITRA rules on mediation, and even the Singapore Convention on Mediation, you know, which is very current. So the, the law has been able to bring all this together into, you know, um, uh, into one place. So Nigeria now is very current uh, when it talks when you talk about um, uh, um, resolving resolving commercial disputes, international commercial disputes or domestic commercial disputes, and of course by extension investment disputes. You know, so that way you are going to we are going to we are, we are expecting to see you know, um, increase in foreign direct investments. However, legal framework, you know, uh, modernizing your legal framework is not enough. You also have to reform your institutions. There must be institutional reforms. Good. And that is where we must, we must really address as a nation. Well, it leads me to my next question um, to uh, Mr. Soshodi John. So how does this new act, how does it enhance the practice? The new act does enhance practice to a large, very large extent compared to where we're coming from. You remember in the past, in the law, the way it was in the former act was um, a bit not so, the powers that were given to arbitrary institutions was limited. But now we have a lot of powers. The scope of powers, of authority that we have, for instance, my institute, the Nigeria Institute of Arbitrators, we can do a lot now, unlike in the past. In the past, when people come to us, parties come to us to appoint an arbitrator for them, sometimes we are handicapped in appointing arbitrators because their arbitration clause, like talked about, arbitration clause is a sentence that you put in an agreement to say that if you have a dispute or have um, any issues that has to do with your claim or controversies, the parties have chosen to go to arbitration. So arbitration clause is what gives the power to arbitral institutions or the court to appoint an arbitrator or for parties to come to arbitration. Where there is no arbitration clause, you can't go to arbitration. So that's the starting point. Unfortunately, in some instances, we've seen a lot of um, contracts that contain invalid or defective arbitration clauses. And because of that, there's a stalemate for the parties. Parties are stuck. They can't go to the court. They can't go to arbitration. But in this instance, when you have this kind of situation, with the new act, it enables and empowers us, the Nigerian Institute as an arbitral institution, to why, whether the parties have a valid clause or not, as long as it is a decision or the desire of the parties to go to arbitration, we can appoint an arbitrator for them. That will ensure that the arbitration matter that is speedily dealt with on behalf of the parties, unlike in the past. And now as well, if parties uh, come to us and they say, okay, well, the arbitration award that was issued by maybe a member of our institute, they are not comfortable with it, they are challenging it. Then my institute can set up a review panel to review that award if the party choose. And then whatever the panel comes up with becomes final and binding on the parties. So you can see that now the parties have an option. They don't have to run to the courts. And with that, the time frame in which matters are dealt with and dispensed with is drastically reduced. Mm. So these are one of the beautiful things of the new uh, arbitration act. But you, you mentioned, uh, you know, that you are just an arbitration institution. So l let me ask you. No, uh, I didn't mention that we are just, just an arbitration institution. You said you are one. We are an arbitration institution. We also administer mediation matters. No, what I so mean by that is, I mean, dispute resolution, okay, what alternative I mean, dispute resolution institution. Okay, uh, the question that I'm asking is, are you the only? No. Okay, that's the point. There are other making. institutions in okay. Nigeria, but we are the foremost by the premier arbitration institute in Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. We were founded 44 years ago, okay. so we are the national body of okay. arbitration institute that um, comprises of all professionals okay. from all sectors in Nigeria. All right. So uh, for for all arbitration institutions, I mean, she's talked about the responsibilities that they have and, and all of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, it comes down to the individuals who perform the activities. Uh, I think it was you who cited um, uh, the PNID case, for instance. Okay, I think maybe it was Mrs. Joshua John who cited 
what they call flimsy excuses you used? Yes, misconduct. Misconduct. Under misconduct. And all those things. At the end of the day, it comes down to the practitioners of arbitration and mediation in the country. How does this law, this new law, help to streamline practice and keep them in line so that those misconducts don't show up in other ways? Yeah, when, when it comes to the issue of um, misconduct, actually, uh, all the arbitration institutions have their uh, ethical standards and uh, rules you know, of um, conduct for the arbitrators. And uh, that is why it's actually very important, uh, what you just said now, the, the new act now provides that, uh, encourages uh, practitioners, lawyers, you know, uh, to support, you know, the um, arbitration um, mechanism, you know. So I, I see the new act actually helping in such a way that, uh, although again, like I said, the new act doesn't uh, prescribe any punishment. The, the new act doesn't prescribe any punishment. But if you are, for instance, a lawyer and you are an arbitrator, then of course you are you are subject to the uh, the um, MBA. the MBA the uh, legal practitioners uh, rules of ethics. Okay. If you are an, an engineer, you are oh. also subject to the rules of ethics of your profession. Okay. So really, there there are other ways by which you know, you could guide against misconduct. And also for every admission institution, the, the, the first thing an institution will want to have in place, put in place, is rule of, rules of conduct. Hmm. How the arbitrators should conduct themselves. You know, and of course, these institutions can, can uh, punish arbitrators when they, you know, uh, uh, run foul of, the, of these rules. Okay. Well, uh, we have to thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for being here this morning. You spoke about the conference that you're having? Yes. I, I was just going to say that um, part of what we do as an arbitral institute is to promote the domestication and practice of arbitration in Nigeria and beyond. And so every year we have an annual conference. And this year we're looking at um, repositioning um, the arbitration practice in, in, in Africa. And that has to do with how do we make arbitration more uh, friendly, the African part of it. How do we ensure that, like we talked about the seat, that arbitration matters are not really ferried out of our continent. Mm, sure. You know, we have the, the African trade agreement right yeah, now yeah. that Nigeria is signatory of trade in, in goods and services across our continent. Mm. And so, so this is where... Yeah, well, when is this conference? The conference happening? comes up... Um, the 16th and 17th of November is okay. going to be held in Abuja okay. at um, Abuja Continental Hotel. Okay. And we are inviting everyone, including you, uh, okay. you know, as a media... You will pay for this advert that you are doing, just us, by the way. Uh, in November. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Shola Oshidi John is Registrar, Nigeria Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. Thank you so much for your time thank this you. morning. Thank as well as Francis Olege, who is faculty member, Nigeria Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. Thank you again. Thank you for, for having us. Morning. So now you know... Well, we're taking another conversation when we return from this break. Do stay with us.